Hello everyone, today we are going to solve the day 20 of September lead code challenge. So today's problem name is unique pass 3. So what they are saying here that we will be given one two dimensional matrix or two dimensional array and we need to uh, and that, that array will contains four types of number. It can contain one. So you can see here it, if, it, if it is contains one that means that is our that will be our starting point. It can contains two that will be our destination point or ending point or it will contain zero. Zero means we, we, we can go through those uh, cell only, right? And if you find any 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 cell with value minus one, that means we will we can't walk over that cell. Uh, okay, so and so so let's try to see that. So this is probably this is the metric representation of the first given example, right? So here I can see one. One means this will be our starting point, okay? And here I can see two. So this will be our end point. Okay, and we can see that we have total nine zero. Okay, means so we have nine cell where the value is zero, right? And one cell with minus one, right? So we can't walk over this cell, right? We should ignore. So now what we need to do? So we need to start from our starting point. Okay, in this case zero zero for this example, and we need to reach our destination point, right? It should. Okay, so it should be uh, two two. Okay, but it's not like that I will come here and here and here that can that, that cannot be one path the condition is we need to reach from 1 to 2 using all the zero means we need to we need to walk through all the zero cell right not minus one cell so 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 I need to start probably from here I will go 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 here and I will come to zero that means we walk through all the cell with zero value and after that we reach to our destination two. Okay, so this can be our one path and another path, what can be our another path? So probably I can start from here, I can come down, then again, then again like this, I can reach to two, right? So I can see there are two unique paths. So and our solution, our answer will be two for the first example, right? So you can see that the only condition is we need to walk through all the cells, all the zero cells and only once. It's not like that we, we can repeat, right? So, it, so we, need, we need to keep in mind that. So this is the main condition that we need to cover all the zero and we should cross all the zero only once, at once only, right? We should not cross same zero for that particular path twice, okay? So these are the two things we do. Okay, so let's try to uh, design one solution for the same. So uh, let's try to uh, let's try to identify what what are the things that that is that are that are known to us, right? So I know that we need to cover all the zero. So what should I do start at first? I will traverse through the given matrix and I will try to identify the total number of cells with zero value, right? So here I can see that we have total nine cell, right? Three plus four plus two, total nine cells with zero value. So that 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 is known that we can identify. Apart from this, this one, so for this case, it, it was the first cell, right, the starting point. But in some example, this one can start, one can be here also, one can be here also, right? So one can be anywhere in the matrix. So we need to identify the starting point also, right? So that will be our second target, identify the starting point, okay? After that, after that we can understand that, right? And we need to, we need to traverse or we need to find the unique path till the destination point two. So I need so for this example, right? I need to start from here, and I need to traverse all the corresponding surrounded, so, uh, surrounding uh, cell with zero value, and I need to check that uh, am I able to reach the cell with value two, right? If yes, then I am going to increase my result with one. That means I found one path. So you you can understand that, right? We need to traverse the matrix. So how so? And we need to traverse till depth. So basically, you can understand that we need to use the depth first search logic, right? So that means I will start from the my starting point. So at first, I will identify starting point. Then I will I will go to the till depth. So here, our depth means whenever I will found my destination, that is two, that will be my one path. Then so suppose I found this path, right? I will come like this. I will found this path. Then I need to backtrack, right? So I will backtrack. Again, I will backtrack, and I, then I need to backtrack and find all other paths or all other possible paths with zero value rights. So this, this, using these three logic, we can solve it. So let's try to write code for the same using Java. So as I already told you, I need to at first identify my starting point and I need to identify that total number of cell with zero value so that I can cross check. So, 
so what happened so we can we can uh, so we can know that we can come here zero here like that only right but this is not a valid part because we are we are only traversing three zero not all the nine zero right so to, to keep uh, so to keep tracking those we need to we need the count of zero okay so so let's try to uh, write solution then so at first i will declare one variable that will let us name it as zero only here i i, I am going to keep tracking my uh, total number of cell with value zero okay so let's initialize that zero only initially and we need one variable for result that we need to return at the end so total number of paths found or let us name it as path of paths only and that will be initially also zero let it be uh, now what i need to do i need to inside my uh, unique path three method i am going to run one for loop and i am going to identify my starting point I need to identify small starting point right to run the DFS and I need to identify total number of cells. So for that I need to traverse the matrix right. So and let's declare two more variables for starting point. So one should be the x value. Let us name it as fx uh, start x and uh, another one will be sy. Okay again it will be initially zero. Now what next? Now we are going to run one two for loop to try to try uh, to pick up each and every cell of the matrix and to check the value okay so let's do that so it should be int i equals to zero then i should be less than grid dot length then i plus plus okay and again i need to run another for loop for the columns right so it should be int j equals to zero and j should be less than grid zero dot length and j plus plus okay now now i need to check the value right so if i will check if my grid ij equals to equals to one that means it's my starting point right then i am going to update my sx variable and sj sy variable right so sx will be equals to i and sj will be equals to j okay so now uh, apart from that we need to count the total number of zero right so we can do this in this in this same uh, same nested for loop only right so I will I will check else if my current value is equals to equals to zero or not. Okay, so I will check that. So it should be grid i and grid j equals to equals to zero. If it is equals to equals to zero, then I am going to increment my zero counter right. So zero plus plus that we declared in the start right or initially. Okay, so now so after running this for loop, now I have two I have two information. I know my starting point and I know total number of zero cells in our matrix. Okay, so what now i will call i will define one dfs function and i will call it so initially I, I need to pass four things so grid obviously the input matrix i need to pass my starting point that will be stored in the sx i need to uh, start my uh, starting column point also right that will be sy in this case and i need to pass one counter in which we are going to keep tracking that how many how many zero we traverse okay so initially it will be zero since suppose we are starting from here right so that means initially it will be zero and once we are done with our dfs then we are going to return our uh, result variable that we declared earlier okay above the method okay now let's quickly define our uh, dfs function also right so again we can declare it as private and here we are not going to return anything because we are going to update directly the result variable or path variable right right it should be path sorry okay from in some dfs function we are going to update our path and we are going to return that at the end okay so return type should be void here and it should be dfs and we are taking four parameters or arguments one is the two dimensional array that will be grid let us name it as grid only we are passing two two value column value and row value so let us name it as x and so let's name it as row and r or c and apart from that we are passing the counter right let us name it as counts so initially we are passing counts as zero and we will whenever i will find two then we will try to match with the total path value okay so you will understand that later so we need to check some base condition uh, like edge cases so our r should be greater than our grid dot length so suppose i am starting here right we can't check this upper side and left side right if we need to keep checking keep checking those things to avoid the array out of bound exception okay so let's check those four boundary condition that one first condition will be r should be greater than uh, grid dot length minus one or r should be less than zero what else uh, column should be less than zero and 
if my column is greater than grid dot length grid zero in this case it will be grid zero right grid zero dot length minus one so if i found this four condition then we should stop right we can return and we need to check another thing right so suppose i found minus one so if i found a negative value then also we can return right we don't need to proceed because we should not con uh, co uh, we should not consider those paths okay so let's add that condition also or grid rc less than zero that means negative if it if i found my particular cell value is negative then we can return right or we can stop execution okay now what will be our next condition check so we need to check this condition also right if i so one can be here also right so in while doing the dfs we can came across through this path only right for, for, to this path uh, to this particular one cell also right so we need to ignore those cell also right so let con let add condition for the same so i need to also check that grid ij sorry rc is equals to equals to 1 and but for the initial one whenever i am starting then i need to consider this one right i, I can't return if i return then it will always return zero right so i will check if it is one and it is if it is not our first uh, first iteration right so to check that first iteration we can check so initially we will pa pass our count zero right so i will check that if count is greater than zero that means it's not our first iteration then in that case again i can return zero because one cannot come in our path that's the starting point right so it should not come in between okay and apart from that uh, we need to check the actual condition where i am going to check that my path uh, my corresponding cell value is equals to equals to 2 or not okay so if it is equals to equals to 2 then again i will check if if uh, i will check that this count so it should, a count will be increased right so whenever whenever i, I am i am go, i am traversing to the other cell i am going to increase my count okay so i will check this counts is equals to equals to the zero total number of zero we found earlier right so i will check that if, if i found those two those two things then we can uh, increment our path that means we found one path value and we can increment it from 0 to 1 that means we found one path and we can return 0 okay sorry it should be only return okay since the return type is void so we covered three uh, three cell value already right we covered it for minus 1 in this here we are checking the negative value we covered it for start uh, 1 because we should not consider any path uh, from 1 because 1 is our starting point and we covered 2 also right if i found 2 and if i found that total number of uh, count is equals to total number of 0 that we computed earlier again we can stop our execution right so for this condition we are going to stop our execution now let's uh, we have remaining one more value right so what should i do whenever i found the current cell value is 0 so if i found that my current cell value is 0 so let's add that logic so if i found that grid c and grid rc is equals to equals to 0 then then i know i found one zero right I, I i traverse one zero cell then in that case i am going to increase my counts okay and what else so we need to make sure that we should not cross this cell one second right so suppose I, I i found this path right now i am i am here right that that means for this particular path we should not come back to this cell only right because we should traverse each cell only once so whenever i will found any zero i will make that cell value temporary as minus 2 so that i can make sure that i am not crossing this path twice or multiple times okay so we will update that cell value as any minus value right so you can you can add any uh, assign any minus value so let's assign it as minus 2 only or minus 9 something like this okay so that means we already traverse that path for that particular path okay or traverse the cell for that particular path okay and now now i need to traverse in four direction right so i can go this right side i can go downwards i can in for some scenario i can go upwards and i can go left for left side also right so i am going to call my dfs function recursively so for dfs function i need to pass grid obviously and i need to pass my start value so one for one for one scenario i am going to suppose i am going to go downwards right in this case it will r will be r plus one and c will remain same and we are going to pass the counts okay and similarly we can do it for uh, other four di three direction right so 
one direction can be r minus 1 that means upward direction upward direction and one can be r r will remain same and c will be increased by 1 that means we are going to the right side and another one will be obviously r and c minus 1 that means we are uh, we are going to the left side cell okay and once we are done with dfs that means we we, we start from here probably and we found one path so we, we discovered this path probably right so i start from here and suppose by using dfs i i, I found this exact this path right now i need to backtrack right now i need to backtrack and i need to find other possible paths so i so i am going to reset this value right so it will be like this if and then after that i will check uh, did I, this this uh, did i update this particular cell if i found that this cell value is minus 9 that means we will again it will reset to 0 so that this cell can be picked for other paths okay and we are going to increment decrement our counts value right since we are doing the backtracking so after reaching the end of, of one dfs call we are re, we are going to backtrack right so to backtrack we are resetting the value right i think that's pretty much for the code let's quickly run it and check whether it's compiling or not okay i think it's compiling and giving us the expected answer so let's quickly check that whether it's expected ac accepted or not okay i think our solution is accepted and it's beating the 100 percent of java okay so let's try to understand the code once again at a glance okay so what we are doing we are taking one counter to keep tracking the all the zero value so for this example i can found that it should be initially equals to equals to nine right because i found nine zero nine cell with zero value after that in this path variable we are going to keep tracking the total number of unique paths we are getting right while traversing now we, in these two variable we are just keep tracking the uh, index of our first or start value start will be always one right there should be only one cell with value one so using this two for loop or nested for loop we are identifying the start start cell position that is the position of one and we are also counting the total number of zero right so after executing these two for loop I, I can I, I will I will surely know about my start cell that will be the position of one and I will also know the total number of cell with zero value right that will be nine okay so now we are calling our DFS function and we are passing one counter because I need to keep checking that uh, whenever I will reach to two so in that I, I am checking that whenever I will reach two I will check that did I cross all the cell with zero value or not okay so for that i need one more count of zero and it will be initially zero and whenever i will find so now you can see that whenever i will find two I, that means i reach my destination then i will check did i cross all the cell with zero value if it is matching then that means i crossed all the cell with zero value right so we are going to increment our paths and we are also checking this boundary condition so if i see any minus value that means negative value that means we already traversed this path right in that case we can stop our execution okay and we are also checking that and we are also discarding the cell with one value because that will be our starting point that cannot be come in our in between paths okay and up and suppose if i am finding any zero that means i found i traverse one cell so i will increment my counter by one so initially it will be zero now it will be one and for temporary so suppose i am here right so for temporary i will make that cell as negative value minus nine that means whenever i am finding the first path that means i know that i already traversed this path so suppose whenever i will come here whenever i i will call dfs for the upward cell i i will see that i okay this value is already negative that means i already traversed this for this particular path okay so i will ignore it so we are doing that so we are temporarily setting a negative value there then we are calling dfs for all four direction and once we are done with our one path then we are resetting those counter okay so that it that particular cell can be picked for other possible paths okay i think that's pretty much for this video if you still have some doubt you can ask me in the comment section thanks thanks for watching bye bye